Hey there everybody and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. Today I'm going to show you not only how to make a watermelon slice, which is cool on its own, but I'm going to show you how to do this completely procedurally, uh, which means uh, we can change kind of the thickness of this slice depending on how you cut it. Uh, we can also change the uh, portion of the slice in some sense and a whole bunch of uh, other settings, some of which we do not want to play with uh, clearly. Uh, but I'm going to show you how to do this procedurally with geometry nodes and materials, so stay tuned. Let's make this thing. So, first thing, geometry nodes. Delete everything and add in a cube and make that a geo nodes object. Our first order of operation, our first mission, is to make this kind of watermelon slice uh, image. Which, you know, you can make better than I drew it. Uh, if you think about it, maybe using the arc um, primitive kind of makes sense, because the arc primitive basically gives us a circle that we can kind of cut off at any point. In other words, an arc, which you can see is almost the shape, but it needs to connect to the center. Luckily, uh, we have an option for that, connect center. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, that is how I made the shape. And you could also control the radius and stuff like that. Okay, part one, done. Uh, part two, uh, let's make this three-dimensional. Noble task. Here's how we're going to do it. I'm going to first of all turn this into actual geometry that we can use. So I'm going to fill the curve. So now there's actually polygons in here and you can see the geometry right there. And I want to take that and give it a depth. So I'm going to extrude it. So pretty simple and model up pretty simple modeling operations. Make sure, by the way, uh, you disable individual so you don't get that weird extrusion. And I'm going to set this to like 0.1 or maybe 0.12. So it's extruded, um, although it doesn't have a bottom side. Now, if you're only rendering the top, that doesn't matter. But uh, if you want to fix that, uh, the way we fix it is we join this back with the original. So this is the original. This is the extruded. When you join them, it now has a bottom. But uh, kind of a caveat uh, with that, if we look at the normals for this, if I can remember how to even find face orientation. There you go. Uh, you can see that these are kind of like different uh, in a sense. So all we need to do is we need to take the first thing and flip the faces. That's going to make it so that all the normals are aligned, uh, which is good because uh, we're going to distribute points and bevel and it matters. Okay. Uh, last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and then merge by distance, which if you look at the uh, spreadsheet, you can see it actually gets rid of some geometry, which makes sense because we have a bunch of overlapping vertices uh, before we did that. Okay, uh, so that's the geometry part done. The rest of it's basically materials and scattering some points. So uh, let's start by adding a material. Again, we have to use set material to do that. And uh, basically what I want for this is I want this to kind of be kind of pink over here. And then as we get to this section, it should be white and green, etc. Like the rind of the watermelon. Now, uh, we kind of want this as a radial or a spherical gradient. And there is a node for that. Uh, but I think the easiest way to think about it, and we're going to be using a lot of texture coordinates for this one, is we're going to take object coordinates, which are centered at the origin. And uh, what we can do is we can very conveniently take the length of this. Uh, which almost gives us what we want, except you can see the um, the origin is down here, right? And it actually cares about the height on the z-axis. I don't want that. I just want to know how far away from a bird's eye view uh, we are from this center. Uh, so a bit of a correction term. I'm going to take another vector math and I'm going to multiply this by 110. The reason for that is now we are ignoring the z-axis. We're multiplying it by zero. And now you can see this whole line, in some sense, is the origin or where it's equal to zero, okay? We have this nice gradient, uh, which, by the way, goes from zero to one because the radius of this thing was one uh, by design, right? I could have made the radius uh, larger, smaller, whatever. Uh, but by design, it was for that, it's set to that, uh, so that when we actually send this through a color ramp, uh, we can very easily map this thing going from zero to one. Uh, so we start off with kind of like a reddish pink color, and we can fine tune this later, and we end with kind of a greenish color, maybe a bit darker. And then in between, uh, we have kind of this rind uh, white thing, which is kind of like a whitish green, I would say. Okay, final thing, uh, pull this back up a bit, and then kind of mess with some settings just to get the kind of look that you want, okay? So this is just the base color. We're gonna add a lot more detail uh, to this. 
So first order of business, connect this to the principled BSDF, so it's actually uh, looking at lighting. And I'm going to actually go into cycles and add some environment stuff uh, so that uh, we can actually see what this looks like. So HDRI, I'm gonna put my watermelon slice in a bathroom, drop it in the sink. Okay, so we have our lighting. Now the question is, and we are gonna spread seeds, don't worry. Uh, you know, don't you worry. Uh, but the question is, how do we make this thing look more realistic? Well, watermelon is kind of like, kind of like, has a texture to it in some sense. It's like this wet, slippery, uh, kind of noisy uh, surface. So to add in this kind of slippery, noisy quality to it, uh, pretty simple. We're going to take a noise texture. This is going to be our source of randomness. By the way, it's going to be stretched uh, in this dimension because we're not using object coordinates. So this is a generated coordinates issue. That fixes it. And by the way, this is why I wanted to explicitly use object coordinates, because we're going to be using it a couple of times. Uh, but if we take this noise texture, kind of scale it down, and send it through a bump node, specifically the height socket, and connect that to the normal, uh, you can see now we get a bit more detail in some sense, right? Uh, we can literally increase the detail, maybe not by that much, and add some roughness. And we'll make that way less intense. And this is just gonna add a bit of a quality to our watermelon, a bit of a surface quality. Uh, we can take this and also bring down the roughness, which is gonna make it look nice and slippery. Uh, we can add more details to this later uh, to make it look better, uh, but just a bit of extra stuff, we can take a Musgrave texture, again, using object coordinates, so it's gonna be this kind of blobby looking thing. If we then add this to uh, our input before the bump, what it's going to do is it's going to use both of these as a bump noise mapping. I'm just going to take this element and multiply by 10 so it's a bit stronger. So you can see we have this thing now very distorted and also with a bit of surface quality. Uh, maybe multiply by 4. Okay, and you can see this is without and this is with. Just adds some nice uh, surface detail. Okay, so now we need to make seeds and make this thing look better. A simple thing to make this thing look better, uh, we can actually use a modifier on top of geometry nodes because geometry nodes is a modifier and there's a modifier stack. Uh, so let's add a bevel modifier. And assuming you did everything correctly with merge by distance and all this, uh, you should get a nice looking bevel that we can control and kind of round out this watermelon slice a bit, which already adds a lot of realism. By the way, if you see some facetting here, worry not. That is an easy fix. Uh, you might try to do shade smooth. That's not going to work uh, because in geometry nodes, you have to do that explicitly. So set shade smooth. Okay. Uh, so this is without bevel and this is with. Immediately adds realism. I think the last step is let's um, distribute some points. Okay. And those are going to be the seeds. So I'm going to distribute points on faces using our, so this is our mesh, using this mesh, I'm going to distribute some points. Now the issue with this is going to be that it's going to put some of the points like out here, and there's only seeds in this kind of pink area. Uh, so that is kind of what we have to confront. And I'm going to turn off bevel for now, uh, so we can actually deal with this. Okay, so if I join this, let me actually use the merge by distance version. If I join this with the original, you're going to see uh, we get the issue that some of the seeds are out here is what I'm trying to solve. Uh, to fix this, we can kind of use object coordinates in a sense. Uh, we can take the position, which is going to show us a three-dimensional space, right? And we can do the same kind of radial trick, right? So I take the position. I only care about the X and Y components because I care about the distance from the center in a bird's eye view, right? We take this, it's the exact same thing we did last time. We're gonna take the length, and now you can see we have a gradient going from zero to one. Uh, this is convenient for us because we can say, for part of this gradient, spawn seeds, and for part of it, don't. So I'm literally gonna explicitly use a less than. By the way, you're gonna see that it's not working the way you expect it to, uh, because it should be using geometry uh, to calculate this. So just a bit of a caveat. There's a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, you're going to need to subdivide your mesh. So if I look at this mesh now, I'm just adding geometry to it. Okay. And the purpose of this is now if we view this, uh, we have a bit more control. Again, it looks a bit nasty, 
uh, but we have a bit more uh, control over this. I think you could try setting this to ngon to avoid the issue, but I don't really care. So if you take this now, the subdivided version, and you connect this to the selection, and now we're only gonna have seeds in a certain section. So we can say where we want our seeds, okay? And for each uh, point, uh, we need to, of course, instance a seed. So let me just clean this up a bit. This is getting really messy. Okay, so we have our slice and we have our seeds. Uh, for the seed, I need to make one procedurally since I said that was the point. Uh, so, getting a bit ahead of myself, I'm gonna start off with a sphere and you're thinking, how's this gonna be a seed? I'm just gonna kind of shape it into a seed, right? Uh, so I'm gonna take a transform geometry, scale it on the z-axis so that it's maybe 20% as a thick and then scale it up on the y-axis, maybe by a bit less. And you can see that's roughly a seed shape. You can distort it with noise and all this and get a better looking version. I think this looks good enough. So for our point distribution, we can now instance on points. And what are we gonna instance? We're gonna instance this geometry. So you can see now we have a bunch of seeds. Those of course are too big. So I'm going to randomize the scale so that they're not all the same scale and we'll make the maximum like 0.06. So you can see these seeds aren't as large anymore. Okay, so we have seeds on the bottom, the top, the side. Let me just do a bit of a modification here. I think the maximum size should be smaller and the minimum size should be bigger. So now the seeds are more reasonably sized and uh, to get these to kind of align correctly, connect rotation to rotation. So now you can see the seed on the side is behaving a bit better. And we can add a bit of randomness so that they're not all facing the same direction. So add a random vector, specifically uh, going on the Z axis is what we care about. So randomize on the Z and you can do a bit on the X and Y if you want to. Okay, so now you can see our seeds are a bit more uh, realistic, right? And if I change the seed of the seed, you can see we're getting dis different distributions. Now one issue I'm seeing is some seeds are too close to each other. And this is easy to fix by changing our distribution settings. So I'm just gonna use Poisson disk, uh, which says don't have two seeds be uh, too close to each other. So at this point, uh, you can just kind of flick through these and find uh, one that uh, looks good to you. Uh, whether that has few seeds or a lot of seeds is up to you. So let's see what this looks like with our bevel enabled. Okay, we have some seeds. Again, I'm thinking these are slightly too big so I'm gonna bring down their average size. And by the way, this seed is a bit off. So I'm just gonna kind of pick a uh, distribution that looks a bit better. You might need to cycle through these for a while. This one looks pretty good, at least from the top. I'm going to add a material just for these uh, instances. In other words, the seeds. And uh, we need to create a new material. So I'm gonna call the seed. And the original, original I'm gonna call wa <coughs> watermelon. Uh, so with the seed, I'm going to get rid of all of this. And in geometry nodes, I'm going to take this and turn it into seed. So now they have uh, different materials, right? So for the shading of our seeds, we can make them kind of like a dark black and a bit brown. And I think that kind of captures the look. I think they should be a bit rougher, not perfectly shiny. And that doesn't look that bad. Maybe they're a bit too dark. You could kind of play around with this and get the look you want. But I think this looks pretty good. I think the main thing that will sell the realism is playing around with this uh, seed distribution and getting a good one. But you don't, you don't want to set the distance too close or you're going to get a scenario like that. That looks pretty good. Okay? So you could go into much more detail in this, but I'm trying to think if there's any tiny modifications we can make. I think a tiny modification we can make that will up the realism by a lot is you can see this radial gradient is kind of like too perfect, right? There's almost like you can see the concentric circles that separate pink from white to green. So I'm just gonna do a bit of fix for that and then we're gonna be done. So notice we used object coordinates for everything here, intentional. The reason I explicitly did that is if we distort these object coordinates, it's going to distort everything that goes after it and it's gonna add realism to every aspect. What do I mean? 
I mean, we can take a noise texture, also using object coordinates, make sure it uses the same coordinate system, and we can mix this in using a color. So the important thing is we're mixing the coordinate system with a noise texture version of the coordinate system. And the important thing is make sure to set this to linear light. If you don't set this to linear light, it's not gonna work. You bring down the factor and you can see this adds distortion. So when it's zero, we get the original, but we can add a bit of distortion, maybe bump up the detail and the roughness and play with this a little more. And you can see this kind of breaks up the pattern a little. So this is what it looked like before, too perfect, and then after, a good hit of realism, okay? So I'm pretty happy with how this uh, came out. Again, the main idea is yes, we made a watermelon slice, that's fine. But the main idea here is that it's procedural. So we can change the portion of a watermelon slice. And you can use this equivalently to make pizza, as you can imagine. Uh, the height of this, everything is procedural. Uh, which is cool. You can even make this kind of like a triangular slice if you wanted to. Um, other things we have control over, of course, is the seed distribution. Uh, we have control over the shape of the seeds, you know, up to you. So there you go. Uh, that is my tutorial for making watermelon slices. And especially for this one, uh, make sure to check out the Patreon page. There's a link in the description where you can get the project file for this, the original one. Uh, so that you don't need to make this yourself and you can study the node network. And when you join Patreon, uh, you get hundreds of blend files I made at this point. I've been at this for like four years. So get the blend files. There's some exclusive tutorials, stuff like that. Uh, so thank you to my patrons and I will see you on the next one.